Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. 2015 has been a difficult year for the South African economy and for domestic business. Terence Kremer joins me now to reflect on the year that was and what to look forward to in 2016. Welcome Terence. Awesome. Um, how would you characterize the past year from an economic and business perspective? Well, it's been an annus horribilis, really, for, from an economic and business perspective. We've seen this perpetual downgrading of growth expectations. We started the year thinking we were going to grow at a certain level, and as we near the last few months of uh, 2015, I think if we meet that 1.4% uh, revised growth rate, I think people will be quite uh, pleasantly surprised. I think it, uh, it will probably be in that range, but it's, it's, it's been a really tough, tough year for business. Uh, the, the mega story of the year, I suppose, for South Africa has been the, um, the commodity price collapse across the board. And we've seen major announcements from mining companies having to really adapt to that co new commodity picture, which looks like it's going to be a lower for longer type trajectory. Obviously, on the positive side of that is that the oil price has also stayed low. But that's been more than offset by what we've seen with the, the, the declining rand. And I think the news flow recently around the finance minister being replaced by a little uh, sort of a, a person who's not really well known, I don't think really does much to inspire more confidence in the RAND, as well as whether we can avoid that dreaded downgrade to junk status. We, we did avoid it um, uh, with Standard & Poor's really changing the outlook to negative rather than downgrading us to junk. But we write on the junk cliff, as people say, and um, you know the rating agencies and well investors, and I think domestic business are, have been uh, taken aback by the latest move, which seems to be quite politically tainted. And uh, I think the the new finance minister has got a tough job to show that he is credible and independent-minded, um, as the previous finance minister was able to prove, also in difficult circumstances. And I think if, uh, if he does not do that, uh, and does not do that soon, I think that this uphill battle that's going to be 2016 is going to be a really uh, difficult, insurmountable climb. What were some of the main missed opportunities this year? Well, I think that was a key theme as well. I think, you know, obviously there's these external headwinds, which I refer to, the commodity price collapse, the weak uh, economic climate in uh, environment and a lot of our trading partners, the change in direction in China, which is, uh, you know, uh, means that they don't really demand the commodities they were. Um, and, you know, Africa also feeling the pain and therefore that market not really kicking in uh, to take up some of the slack that it maybe we thought it would. So uh, we've got those global headwinds. So it was really should have been a year of fixing the roof where we could, where the sun was shining. And that really relates to domestic uh, domestic policy and uh, dealing with the policy uncertainty once and for all. I don't think, you know, sometimes uh, there's a lot of talk about policy uncertainty. I don't think there is as much uncertainty as there's really, really bad communication around what our policy is. It really doesn't help to have multiple plans, even though they might say many of the same things, to have a national development plan and then to have a, a new growth path and and then a, a medium term strategic framework people don't understand that i think we <laughs> we need to consolidate our message messaging it's, our messaging is very poor and our implementation is even poorer so i think missed opportunities all around whether it's on the e-toll front if we're going to stick with e-tolls you know we need to start seeing some enforcement and implementation there if we're not going to stick with e-tolls we need to bite the bullet and move to a fuel levy on the energy front, there was definitely an opportunity to really come up with, uh, finalize our plan, our integrated resource plan. We have got this really low demand uh, trajectory at the moment. It's very, very different from the 2010 uh, integrated resource plan. It means a different way of investing in generation probably, and a different generation path. And um, it also involves, will involve a different investment uh, framework for the transmission and distribution side, which uh, needs to pay get much maybe more attention if, say, we're going to have more renewables or gas into the system. So the fact that we didn't use this yet to get certainty on the energy plan is a major missed opportunity. Then there were also own goals, <laughs> serious own goals. The visa debacle was the biggest own goal of the year, where I think we 
it's, you know, with this uh, exchange rate falling as it did, our biggest export opportunity was our great tourism uh, products. We've got many tourism products that really should be, you know, that are the envy of the world and we should be taking advantage of that, selling those products in this weak uh, exchange rate environment. And then you add a, a, a visa element in. Now what drove that decision? Uh, it might be the, the road to hell being paved by good intentions around child protection, or there might have been other considerations here around security and South Africa needing to tighten up in light of what's happening in the terror climate around the world. We don't know, but it, uh, what's, what's maddening is that everyone could see that the, this uh, wave was going to hit us, uh, and yet we persisted and didn't adjust to adjust the way we implemented probably a good intentioned uh, plan. So we've had uh, many, many own goals, we've had many op missed opportunities, and uh, I think I've just touched the tips, tip of the iceberg of many of them, but it's, it's been a year of own goals and missed opportunities. Is there any prospect for an improved economic climate in 2016? Well, I think we're getting the message strongly that the commodity cycle is going to be lower for longer. So that means that South Africa really needs to adjust its mindset to that. We've seen the big mining companies are adjusting to that in, in quite dramatic ways, with the Anglo-American restructuring announcement being the most uh, you know, uh, top of mind of that, those dr that drama. But there's a lot of drama taking place, not only in the, in the mining space, but in the resources space generally. We've seen steel companies having to go into business rescue this year, seen steel companies having to do dramatic things in terms of asking for uh, protection as well as going to shareholders for, to, for effectively private bailouts because it is so tough. So, uh, so the prospects, uh, I think it is going to be, I think, harder in 2016. The expectations that, uh, that it's harder and we're also making it harder for ourselves with decisions like the finance minister decision, like not dealing with the SAA crisis, you know, and then we've also got this whole issue of the drought and the, the water crisis. You know, the drought is a, a natural phenomenon, but the management of water resources is a human and a policy intervention, and that we've been very, very weak, and uh, we just haven't again mended the roof while the sun has been shining. You know, so we've just uh, allowed ourselves to be open to a number of external headwinds and these crosswinds, these domestic crosswinds that we have to deal with. And then on top of it, we've got a domestic election next year in the municipal front. Now that could go, that I think one of the, the positive developments of 2015, which actually could uh, stimulate uh, 20, 2016, is the higher level of social engagement. Um, and that was epitomized by the fees must fall movement. Now, obviously, uh, the giving in to that, that movement uh, so dramatically was, was an interesting development, put major pressure. It's, been, it's going to put major pressure on the fiscus again, and we're going to have to find a way uh, to, to sustain higher education into the new year. But it does show that there's this higher level of engagement, there's this higher level of, of pushback. We're not, uh, there's, no, there's, a, there's a deep intolerance now for corruption, there's a deep intolerance for misspending or misallocation. And uh, I think that pushback is a positive sign. So civil society um, and the, uh, in 2015 was a big story. Uh, the, the rise of civil society and the pushback against waste, I think, was, uh, was a big story. And that we must take some positives from. Now, that can go in different directions. It can be very negative directions in the sense that we could now have protest all the time. And the louder you shout, and the more you give in, you know, that's the sort of trend. So if you can galvanize and mobilize, you can, you can, you can get your way, even when your way might <laughs> dislodge the most vulnerable in society. But I think we must take that as a positive from for, for 2015 and something that we need to build on, this active civil engagement in society, this pushback against corruption and this intolerance for waste. I think that's a very, uh, very positive uh, <laughs> spin on 2015. But on the whole, I think if we look at our realistic expectations for 2016, it's more difficult times, another uphill battle on the economic and business front. Thank you, Terence. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.